This is what's called CSST gas pipe. CSST stands for corrugated stainless steel tubing. I was also introduced to this flexible stainless gas line in the early 90s. I've used just about every brand out there except for this particular brand. Now there's only four or five companies that make what's called UL listed or approved stainless gas line. Now this happens to be Home Depot's version of stainless flexible gas line. The brand is called Home Flex. The only reason I really went with this particular brand was it was way more cost effective and I didn't have to buy anywhere near as much pipe. There weren't too many other options around here. I think I ended up spending around $150 for about 50 feet of gas line and three fittings. The installation process is pretty straightforward. After drilling the holes in the necessary floor joists, I pulled the pipe and it actually pulled fairly easily. What I'm trying to do is turn the corner without using any fittings here. So I'm pulling the pipe and feeding it down to where the water heater is actually going to be. Now normally when using black iron fittings I would use pipe dope, but I chose to use a really high quality approved Teflon tape instead. Now I will say that between the black iron fittings and the brass adapter, it's always very important to use Teflon. But between the compression nut and the brass fitting itself, you do not use Teflon tape. So this is where the regulator from the propane tank will get installed. For now I need to put a cap on it and get it ready to put under pressure. I'm still learning how to use my new camera. For whatever reason, it wasn't focusing very well. But the pipe is pretty cut and dried as far as the way it gets installed. There's a little tiny brass ring that gets crimped around the pipe before the nut is connected to the adapter.
there's only two places in the house that will need propane. The water heater and this location here which is for the stove. Now the stainless pipe has a soft vinyl rubber type coating over the top of it that is a protective coating. Now there should not be any cuts or tears in this protective coating anywhere on the pipe during the installation process. Even right at the fittings, it should be very close to the fitting and almost no stainless pipe should be visible per the inspector. I'm just using a pair of copper cutters here and carefully cutting the pipe. I'm using my channel locks to crimp the brass ring that locks the pipe to the fitting. The required gauge must be specific enough to the required pressure, meaning I couldn't put a 100 PSI gauge on here. It has to be a 25 to 30 PSI gauge. The inspector requires 25 PSI for 25 minutes. Okay, all, all of the gas line is in and finished. I had it under test, I still have it under test uh, at 25 PSI. Uh, code calls for typically 25 PSI for 15 minutes. Um, and it's been more than 15 minutes. I don't, I don't know if, if it's 25 PSI for 25 minutes. Sometimes the, the times are different depending on where you're at. Um, but what I do know is it's holding test. I also put a gauge on the water lines, uh, making sure that, uh, that we don't have any issues with the water lines. And I'm gonna leave both of these lines under test. Uh, I'm not going to 
uh, take the gauges off because this is a really good indicator of a leak. If I run a drywall nail into a pipe, that's going to tell me faster than anything. So those gauges will stay on there um, for as long as I need to. Um, this particular type of what's called CSST or flexible stainless uh, gas line, this is the stuff that the big box stores st uh, sell. I think this is called Home Flex. Um, I've used track pipe, I've used gas tight, I've used basically all of them. And the only reason I went with this particular brand is because it was cheaper. Uh, as far as the standards, they're all the same, they're all about the same. But this stuff was about two bucks a foot versus gas tight, which is what I would have preferred to use, was over you know four to five dollars a foot. And so I've got the drop for the, um, for the water heater. Um, that's why I put it under the stairs where I did if you can see it. Um, and I've got the drop coming out over here for where the range is going to be. Now, uh, the uh, typical pressure that propane runs at, if you can see over my shoulder there, that's the stub out for the uh, range. Uh, typical pressure for propane is less than a pound, actually less than a quarter of a pound usually. So there's less than a quarter of a pound of pressure that's gonna run through this. Uh, sometimes a little bit more, but guaranteed no more than two pounds. Actually, a two-pound uh, a two-pound system is typically a commercial uh, system for gas lines. Um, so there's not ever going to be a whole lot of pressure in this. Um, so putting it at 25 psi and letting it sit there is a guarantee that that it's going to hold. Obviously, the, the two pounds or less. Um, I actually had a an apprentice working for me one time that cut a uh, gas line, um, thinking it was a water line. Uh, with a Sawzall and it was a 50 pound two inch gas line, a plastic gas line. And he, uh, that led to an evacuation of the entire neighborhood. Uh, it led to some OSHA training. And uh, the only reason we didn't get a $30,000 fine was because the pipe was not sleeved where it went under the concrete in code yellow sleeving. And so that got us off the hook. So anything relating to gas pipe should be code yellow. Uh, that's gas. So anyway, uh, this was one of the last big things. Uh, the next big thing that we're going to do on Monday is we're going to go through all of our electrical stuff that I got from the dump. Uh, those of you guys that have followed us for a while, uh, remember it's, it's been over a year ago where I went to the dump and I found all of the cheetah. I, if you look over my shoulder, you can see the boxes and boxes of uh, electrical uh, components. I've got brand new GFIs, I've got brand new switches, I've got brand new uh, uh, boxes. And uh, I called the inspector to find out if I could use this. And there's nothing wrong with any of the stuff. It's all brand new. There's nothing wrong with it. What happened was Leviton, the company that owned Cheetah, lost a uh, patent infringement lawsuit. And so the issue is, um, if I don't have enough of the right parts and pieces, um, I may not use it because if I can't finish my house with this stuff and even have some extra stuff uh, just to make sure down the road I don't have any problems with it, I, don't, I may not use it because I, I can't get any more of it. It's almost impossible to get your hands on any of this stuff. But I've got thousands and thousands of dollars worth of, of parts. So I'm gonna try to, especially now that I know that there's no conflict with uh, the product. The product is UL listed. There's, it, it, some people think it's a little bit less um, than the new stuff, but the bottom line is it's all made in China. It's all the same stuff. Um, so I, I will use it. Um, if I can help it, I will use it because that will definitely save us some money. money. So that's um, next week. That's all we're going to be doing next week is uh, doing the electrical, getting everything finished, ready for inspection so I can start uh, uh, putting the insulation up and get drywall hung. That's my next big goal. It's a mud hole out there today. It is getting so warm so fast that uh, um, it's just a mud hole. And this weighs on me. Uh, when I have you drive up the road and I see the conditions that the road are in, it weighs on me. And thank goodness there's only usually a, a few weeks out of the year where it's this bad. If even that, there's usually only a few days and we try and hit it with the tractor as soon as we can. Um, but it's, it might take us years to get this figured out. And that's kind of a bummer, but at the same time, um, th this is just part of the deal. If this road was perfect, getting up here to our property, the land would have sold a lot faster and, and we'd have a bunch of uh, fancy cabins around our place, which someday we may have anyway. But uh, 
I'm gonna go buy another tractor this evening. I found a tractor, a 1961 Ford tractor that has less than 800 original hours on it and I'm not gonna tell you much about it until next week, but I will tell you that I'm buying it from a company that I would prefer not to do business with. It's a company that, in my opinion, when it comes to farming, um, I, they're a monster. They're, they're a genuine monster as far as, I, I should say a monster as far as size. I'm not gonna get into whether or not I, I agree with their principles, but they're a huge seed company that has uh, a couple of big uh, factories in the area. And this was a tractor that was used to haul a slag trailer back and forth, so it has almost no hours. It's the cleanest tractor I've, I've seen for the price, and I'm gonna go buy it this evening, so.